This meeting is being recorded by host. Okay. Okay. Just, let me hit. You let don't me hit, care. Got it. All right. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I am here with a high school friend of mine, Nader. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I don't think I ever learned. Uh, Bani Lohi. I don't think anyone's ever going to learn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't that far off. I was going to say Bon Alohi at first. Hey, that's close enough. I mean, people people will botch it worse than that, honestly. So, but it's, you drag out that A, right? Yeah, drag out that A. Okay. Most so, people don't. Most people don't even try. So you giving it a shot is good enough. Well, I mean, I'm. I, have, I like to think I'm cultured enough. I've taken some Spanish courses. I know that you're not Spanish, though. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> I know how in the re the rest of the world how vowels are pronounced, how some stuff is pronounced. I know yeah. that that's a poor reasoning, but hey, good enough though. Good. I mean, that would have been a good first uh, first guess though. I would have. That was, I was gonna say it. I was like, you know, let's not butcher it. Let's let's have him say it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are going to be talking about something different. Usually, James and I are on talking some football, or I was on a couple of weeks ago by myself talking basketball. And uh, which, by the way, did you watch? I know you're a basketball guy. Did you watch the Final Four tonight? I just watched uh, North Carolina and Duke. That was a good game. I, that was a great game. I'm happy with the results. Uh, I like North Carolina. Okay. I mean, I'm an Alabama. I'm an Alabama fan, but if I had, to have, like a side team, North yeah. Carolina would be like a side team of mine for college basketball. So, uh, you know, I don't like Duke. I don't like Kansas yeah. either. So. Oh, I don't either. I used to like Kansas, but ever since West Virginia joined the Big Twelve, like I can't stand Kansas. Yeah, and yeah, it's not so have, much that. Have a great reason. What's that? You have a great reason then to not like Kansas. Uh, especially it, in I mean, it's like Oklahoma, the Big Twelve is just a, it's a mess. I think it constantly caters to Oklahoma and Texas and football and Kansas and basketball. It, it's yeah. just it's abysmal. Yeah, and Kansas getting this far, I'm actually a little surprised. I didn't think Kansas would get this far. I didn't I had uh, Gonzaga, which I knew that was going to be – like, once the tournament started, I knew they were going to falter out and choke somewhere because – They always they, do. Yeah. And then Arizona, like, once they, I They surprised them, me. I had them going deep, along with Kentucky. I had a pair of Wildcats in the national title, and that didn't go yeah. as planned. I knew Kentucky. I can't – I think Calipari is one of the most overrated coaches that – you know, in college basketball, like guys. I don't. I don't know if he's an overrated. I think he's a great recruiter. I think he's a good coach, but yeah, I mean, at some point you got to be able to have some more results, and he's definitely been able to get talent, obviously, to Kentucky, and doesn't have yeah. a whole lot to show for it. Yeah, he's like an elite recruiter. Just yeah. you know, one title in like what 13, 14 years. I mean, something like the one that. time. He, the one time he won a title was with Anthony Davis. So, you know. I just always was like, uh, I was like, you know, overrated. And now the SEC sort of caught up to him. You know, Arkansas is looking good. Auburn's looking good. Alabama's, you know, hit or miss, depending on what Alabama is. Yeah, to show up. I mean, the SEC finally realized, you know what, why don't we spend some money and get really good basketball coaches? <laughs> and now tech, well, te once Texas and Oklahoma come up yeah. there, they're, they're going to get even better. So Especially Texas. I, I, Oklahoma, you know, I think their basketball is kind of hit or miss, but – with Texas with, with, with Chris Beard, it's going to be a problem. And I was going to ask you before we get into the video, what's going on with our Packers, man? Like, what's going on? They just traded the best receiver in the game, and they're not getting anyone? Like, what's going on? Uh, Yeah, so we, we can talk about the Packers. I was going to save that with, for James, but, yeah, we can talk about that. Uh, look, I, I mean, I've wrote about it on my blog. I, I'm not really big on paying a 30-year-old receiver almost $30 million a year. I totally understand moving on. Um, it sucks. I love Devontae Adams. Yeah. But if you're going to pay Aaron Rodgers this much money, you got – like, it's it's going to take an effect somewhere on the roster. Yeah. And well, apparently before he signed that contract, apparently Rodgers knew that he was gone. Like, Adams was like, I'm out of here regardless And that's of the Adams. thing. It's, it sounds – really does sound like it wasn't Green Bay's decision. They were going to keep him around at all costs, and Devontae was just like, you know what, I want to move on. And if that's the case, that's totally fine. Like, I, I've lived in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm not an idiot. I know what it's like up there. It's – as Roger said last year, it's not a vacation destination. It takes a special type of person 
to like love Green Bay, want to stay in Green Bay, want to go to Green Bay. And oh, yeah. he's a California guy. Look, I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather go to Las Vegas than stay in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah. And then also you got a factor in he I mean, you mean, you mean uh, his college quarterback was Derek Carr. Yeah. So they've been wanting to play together for a long time. Yeah. And you know it, it's a good fit. You know, Raiders ever since they lost rugs. I saw a photo of him holding that black and silver 17 jersey. I was like, that's salt in the wound, but damn, he looks good in that. Yeah. (laughs) And then we lost uh, MVS, which I was actually happy with that. I I wasn't the big MVS fan. I I think MVS gets a bad rap. I mean, he's not the greatest receiver in the world. I've compared him a little bit to like a poor man's Randy Moss. I mean, Big body, he's a deep threat, but that's really about all he is. Uh, yeah. And obviously, he's not nearly as talented as Randy Moss. But uh, I really would have liked to have brought him back, but the Chiefs signed him to a pretty fairly lucrative deal. And I was like, all right, I'm fine with that. Y'all can take him. Uh, I'll, ta- I'll take that luck with someone else. That, that was like a desperate signing for them after losing Tyreek. I feel like that was a little bit of a desperate signing. And that, the that. thing is, like, they're not really the same player. I mean, Tyreek can do a lot of different things, and MVS is a one trick pony, really. Yeah. And I think, honestly, Packers are going to get, uh, they're going to get Will Fuller. That's the gut feeling I have. Is they're gonna get- I'm not a fan. If we're going to get anybody, because Devontae mm-hmm. Parker was moved today, and I'm a little, that was like my safety net. If we could get anybody, let's get Devontae Parker. But he's kind of old. I'm fine with that, I guess. But obviously, you got DK Metcalf, who that's the longest of shots. Um, trade him, trade love. <laughs> I, I mean, why would you trade him? I would trade love just because, I mean, if you're going to go four years with Rodgers, if you're all in. With well, Rogers, here's the thing I'm not convinced Rodgers is playing the rest of that contract. If he, is, if he is like, yeah, I'll play the five years. Okay, yeah, let's move him. But if, And if he really considered retirement like he claims he did, why not keep Love around for another year? Just who in knows? case. But, I, and, but, but the thing is, who knows if Love is going to even be that. So if, if you can trade Love and you can net in, I'm all for that, especially if we're in a win now. If we're in a win now position, I mean, we got great running backs. We have a pretty good O line. Our defense is finally good now. I feel like, I feel like if we're gonna go for the home run play, we got to go for like a DK Metcalf. Worst case, go for a Lockett because I feel like Seattle, I don't want his contract. In a re- well, yeah, I don't want that contract either. But I feel like Seattle, they're in a rebuilding phase. Yeah. We can sort of take advantage, and I feel like. We can still get Lockett and have Seattle pay half of the contract, sort of like what the Colts are doing with Matt Ryan. Yeah, and the Texans did that a little bit with Randall Cobb, too, when we traded for him. But uh, Speaking of Texans, Brandon Cooks was a guy I was thinking of, too. That's one I would keep an eye on. Yeah. That feels like the most likely to happen. Uh, I still, I'll be shocked if we don't get a veteran receiver. If we go into the draft and we still don't have a veteran receiver, I'll be very surprised. Um, and if we go to the draft, I really want uh, the guy from Arkansas. What's his name? Burks. That's the guy. I'm, I'm fine with. I mean, really, all of them. Uh, maybe except Garrett Wilson because I and Dotson. I don't think that we need guys like them. We have slot guys already. Uh, and they're and B, they're not that big. And if you're gonna play in Green Bay, you got to be pretty big to handle the cold. And, and uh, Will, I think Wilson's going top ten, so we're gonna have to trade up. We're gonna get Wilson. So I think it's gonna be Burks. Uh, I want James, Burks or Olave. Olave would be good. Jameson Williams would be solid too, but you know he's coming off an ACL. That know. doesn't really bother me. And my my friend James has said, you know, why don't you go after OBJ? I'm like, I'd, I'd be fine with that. Oh, yeah, the problem yeah. is, is that he's coming off a knee injury. When is he going to be available? And how much money does he want? Because like, same with, same like, with you want injury. $20 million, I'm sorry. I'm not forking that over. Even though you played great in the playoffs, you're not going to be available until November, December, January. <clears throat> same with Landry. Like, I'd be cool with Landry, too, but I think that he's wanting money, too. So, I mean, they're sort of running out of options come uh, draft time. So, 
I mean, I think the top guy might be uh, Lazard going into the season. And then look, I, I, it, Lazard's another one. I, I even more so than MVS. I think he gets a bad rep. Lazard does a lot of things really well. Oh yeah, yeah. I like Lazard. He 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 can. He's more of a possession receiver. And even I'll admit he's more of a number three. But he's good over the middle. He blocks his ass off. I mean, he's as Lafleur calls him a war daddy. I just I oh, love yeah. Lazard. Oh yeah. So let's go. We've talked Packers. We've talked a little bit of college hoops. Let's go to the meat of this uh, podcast and why I wanted to have you on. World Cup, we're at it again. Last time I think I had you on, we were coming off the World Cup uh, in 2018. Now it's four years later, hard to believe, but it's happening again. And I know you're a big soccer guy. Would you call it soccer or football? Uh, It depends who I'm talking to. Like, if I'm (laughs) – if I'm if I'm talking to people over here, I'll say soccer. But if I'm talking to like you know back home, um, I'll say like I'll say football. Yeah. Football, okay, yeah. So what? it just depends who I'm talking to. Depends, okay. I was about to say, are we gonna have a problem if I call it soccer? You can call it soccer. We'll call it soccer. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk. I want to talk about the U.S. first because obviously I'm I'm a diehard American. Uh, I want to know about this team. They didn't qualify in 2018. 2022, they do, though, although on a weird circumstance. Uh, I'm curious what you think because I saw the standings for this qualifying, whatever you call it, cup, I guess, for the CONCACAF. And Canada is one. And I think Mexico and the U.S. were two and three or tied at two or something. Very strange. Did they not take it seriously? No, they did. Uh, Canada – they, this is the first time they're qualifying in like 30 years. They have two really good players on Canada that are better than anyone on Mexico and the U.S. So they're very reliant on these two players. Um, one of them is Alfonso Davies, plays on Bayern Munich. He's one of the world's best players for his position. I'm familiar with Bayern Munich. <laughs> yeah, he's on, he's on that team. Uh, they just played really good when it mattered the last two years. Um, Talent-wise, overall, USA and Mexico are still more superior. But and Canada, another, another this, thing, uh, this just popped in my head. Canada finished first, but in the draw, which we'll get into here in a bit, I think that they were a lower seed, so to speak. Yeah, they were a pot four. So the way the draw works, they're in four pots. Yeah. And the seeding is uh, dictated by your FIFA rankings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Canada, they just became good for maybe the last year or two. But all those years before that, they were irrelevant, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, their their rankings were really low. Like I'm talking like maybe in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, around there. And maybe just in the recent years there, they came up to like 40s, 50s now. Hmm. And even then, they're like they're not they're still just an okay team. Like they're just a solid team now. Interesting. So, what are your? I want to know what are your thoughts on the U.S. men's national team? You said that they're a more talented team than Canada. Uh, I want to know your thoughts because obviously, for the first time probably ever, we have a real uh, dude in Christian Pul- Pulisic. Is it Pulisic or Pulisic? Pulisic. Christian Pulisic, yeah. Um, my take on this team, I think on paper they're a great team. The talent is there. There's a lot of players that play on really good European teams, like club-wise. You know, like Pulisic plays on Chelsea. Uh, Weston McKinney, uh, he plays on Juventus. That's another big, big team. A lot of players play in Germany. So this – on paper is a very talented team they're a young team as well um that's the thing that probably worries me about them is a lot of them have zero world cup experience so a lot of these guys pretty much didn't play on that 2014 world cup team so right. they're going to come in and experience but the talent is there these guys are definitely talented it's just ma- it's just a matter of they can put it together or not that's the only thing i'm worried about the usa is can they put it together because there's a lot of games where they don't look good at all. Like, they just lost to Costa Rica 2-0. There's a couple of games. I don't know if it was Jamaica or, or who, but they either drew or there was a couple of games where they just looked bad. And I think the biggest factor is their manager. They don't have the best manager uh, in my mind. So, but the talent is there. If they put it together, they're going to they're gonna 
They're going to be good. So that brings up my next point. What should my expectations be? Because right now I'm a little excited. I think top two in the group, which we'll get into in a bit, maybe win a game or two in the knockout round. Probably more likely a game. Uh, <laughs> top two is doable. Uh, I think England's still the superior team. But, I mean, you know, Iran, that's my team right there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the the European playoff team, if it's Wales, Wales yeah. is a scary team. Wales is yeah. a pretty good team. And then if Ukraine comes in, you know, if they're come, you know, they're going to be playing for pride off that war that's going on. Yeah, I don't know if y'all have heard about that. Yeah, yeah, somewhere on the news. <laughs> um, when you play a team with, you know, that's playing 100% for pride, and you have like the whole uh, the whole tournaments back in them, it's sort of it's really hard to beat those kind of teams. Um, sort of like St. Peter's in a way, yeah. college basketball. I feel like everyone was rooting for them. You know, I wasn't. Pride, I'm was not a big. I'm not a big uh, a Cinderella guy in basketball. Like after you've had your moment, fine, but I don't want to <laughs> see you make a deep run. Like the whole St. Peter's thing. I, I once they got to the Sweet 16, I was like, okay, someone's got to take these guys out. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. That's the thing with like Ukraine. I feel like. If they get if they get in here, which I mean I still don't think they will. I think Wales will get in. Wales is a pot two team in reality, so yeah. that's a that's a hard opponent to play against. So, you know, like I said, top two is doable. Now getting to the knockout, I don't think they'll win a game of the knockout person <laughs> if they were to get there. Okay, all right. I figured probably not. I'm I'm an uh I shouldn't say an optimist, but when it comes to the U.S., I am. I'm always looking to. Maybe, maybe this is the year we'll make a deep run in the World Cup. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the groups. Well, I, well, no, I'll tell you what. Let's go to the favorites. I do okay. want to go over those with you. We've kind of talked about that. Uh, Las Vegas favorites World Cup. All right. So – just before you go into the odds, I feel like the pot one teams are going to be mainly the favorites and then add in Germany from pot two. That, that's going to be mainly like your main, your main group of favorites. Now, go ahead and uh, list the odds. So, number one, and it feels like it's the same one every year, it's Brazil at plus 450. France at plus 550, England at 550, and then it's a little bit of a drop to Spain at 800, Argentina at 900, then a little bit more of a drop to Germany at, a, at 1100, Belgium to 1200, Portugal to 1200, and Netherlands at the same number, then another big, an even bigger drop to Denmark at 2800, and then from there it gets even, you know, and a further drop, Croatia, Uruguay at 5000, uh, Switzerland and the Senegal, hmm, Senegal at 8,000, and then our Team USA at 10,000. So still a ways down. Yeah. Um, and like and then said, obviously yeah. there's more, way more below them, but I'm not going to get into that. And, you know, every World Cup, there's, you know, your group of six, seven, I guess, and if the way, you know, it's a college basketball your blue bloods in a way there's always going to be these six seven teams that are always going to be competing you know and they're mainly the pot one teams like you're going to have your argentinas your brazils your france you know spain germany you know you, these are like your main your main teams that are going to com compete um as far as favorites i would probably say there's five teams in my mind that are like one step above everyone else and I think that's going to be uh, France, who won in 2018. I still think they're the most talented team in this tournament. Who I picked in 2018, not knowing a thing about soccer. And I picked France. And, I, and I, you didn't give me shit for it, but you said, I'd keep it, I'd watch out for that. France can be hit or miss sometimes. Yeah. That, they, <laughs> and see, and the thing is, that's the case with them. Like, talent wise, they're the best in my mind. And then this past summer at the Euros, they laid an egg. So it just depends, you know, how they come out and play. If they're if they put it together, it's sort of like US. If they put it together, yeah. they're gonna they're gonna win. But in they have a lot of egos on that team, and I feel like that can sometimes get in the way of them. 
It's France. Going. Come on. France? France. Egos? No. And they got a lot of egos. Like in the Euros, apparently one of the moms uh, of the players yeah. came in and like was like cussing at another uh, parent of another player. And it was just a whole fiasco. Mm. Um, so, yeah. France would be, you know, just on talent, France is definitely one of my favorites. But usually teams that win the previous World Cup don't have good history. I think four out of the last five World Cups, the defending champion didn't make it out of the group stage. Yeah, I think I've, I remember that roughly because uh, Germany won it in 2014. And I remember that was one of the big storylines in 2018 was that they didn't make it to the knockout round. And then I forget 2010, maybe Spain. I don't remember. Maybe Spain made it to the knockout round. But, yeah, yeah. you're right, though. So so that's the thing with France. I think they'll, they'll make it through this time. I mean, they have, a, I think, a manageable group. But it's just something to look out for. Uh, Brazil's definitely going to be up there. I mean, every time Brazil's going to yeah. always be up there. Um, you got uh, – I think Spain is going to be up there. They got a really good, talented team. And then maybe uh, Argentina and then England. I think England coming off that Euro, uh, I guess, collapse at the very end, I feel like they're going to be a little motivated. They got a really young team. Um, I feel like that's another team that can make some noise if they put it together. That's another team that has a lot of egos, I feel like, is England. So, you know, those are my five probably teams that I can say are the favorites to, uh, to win it this time. Yeah, England was the team in 2018 I kind of latched on to. Uh, I don't know, kind of the – although my, my uh, mother country you would say is Ireland, but Ireland, England, basically the same thing. I was, yeah. uh, was kind of cheering for them, and then they had that heartbreaking loss to – I think it was Croatia. Croatia, and, yeah. In the semifinals, and uh, I was disappointed with that. I wanted a France-England uh, World Cup final. Yeah, that's what I wanted too. Um, that would have been a fun match for France and England. But I remember but, you saying that. Watch out for Croatia before uh, that World Cup. And sure enough, you were right. They made a deep run. No, I'm not high on them this time, though. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're a little bit older than they're, – they're pretty much the same team. They're just a lot older this time around. So uh, I'm not too high on them this time. So, so let's go ahead and get into the groups then. Uh, okay. Group A – I don't have that in front of me. You go ahead and name them, name them off. So we got Group A. We have Qatar, the host nation, uh, Netherlands, Senegal, and Ecuador. Okay. So, I, I so, remember our conversation from four years ago, and you saying that Qatar, Qatar sorry, is going to lose games like eight to nothing. Do you still feel that's the case? Uh, I'm not going to say eight to nothing. <laughs> a couple of, couple of reasons. Uh, I feel like they're going to have the, the host nation, I guess, favoritism. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, you know, if, if there's ever a questionable call or if refs are going to favor one way, it's going to be in their way. Um, they're, they're going to have the home field advantage. Uh, and another big factor that a lot of people don't look at, Qatar is super hot. And not a lot of teams in this World Cup are equipped to that kind of weather. Oh, you mean temperature-wise. I thought you meant how they're playing on the field. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, temperature-wise, it's like uh, if anyone's been to Vegas or Phoenix, like that right. kind of hot. Um, and not a lot of players are equipped to that, so I feel like they're going to have an advantage there. But I think Less, I think, more the country. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, feel like, I feel like they'll lose every game, but it'll be like 1-0 or like it'll be a lot closer than what, you know, than 8-0. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right, because I can remember last, you know, last World Cup, Russia, I think, surprised people and made it to the knockout round, you know, when you're in your host nation. Just a lot, you got a lot of, you know, people rallying around you, and I'm sure it's going to be the same, although not quite the population as Russia or any of the other countries that have hosted. But I, I would say you're right. They're going to rally to them. They'll probably keep things close. And honestly, I don't really see a dominant team in this group am i wrong i think netherlands will be the favorite uh but i i really don't know what kind of team you're going to get with the netherlands i think they're going to win the group but i would keep it i think the dark horse is uh senegal i think senegal is a really good team yeah i i was gonna say yeah senegal i mean they were one of the teams with the best odds uh or one near the top i should say 
I didn't see much of Ecuador. I didn't see where Ecuador ranked. And uh, I mean, I just remember the Netherlands went to at least one final back in 2010, maybe another in 2014, uh, or at least made a deep run. They're always up there, you know, among yeah. the best, it seems like. Um, Senegal has the best player out of this group. So if they're going to, if you're going to go off star power, Senegal is going to have the best player in the group. Um, so I, that's a, that's a dark horse I would look at. Uh, on a side note with Batar, Batar did play in the Gold Cup with the U.S. this past summer. And uh, I believe they lost to the U.S., but it was in penalty kicks. So it was a very close game. Um, I think they were, in, they were in there with U.S. and some of the other con- uh, CONCACAF teams. So they're, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna give a good fight, I feel like. Um, but I'm going to – you know, I think Netherlands and Senegal is going to be your two favorites. Okay. Interesting. All right. So Group B, this is when we get to our group, England, Iran – I almost said Iran. I'm not going to, but I'll go Iran, U- U.S. And then it's who? Wales, Ukraine, and... Or Scotland. Scotland, okay. Um, I, I, you already said you, you think England is the favorite. I know Iran's tricky. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously the U.S. is pretty good. Wales is, I think you're right, going to be really sneaky if they uh, qualify. Yeah, it, 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 it's a, I think if, if you have to think of the easiest group, I, in my mind, I think it's B. Uh, I think it's a good group for both Iran and the U.S. You know, it's the easiest path, I feel like, to the knockout phase. Um, you know, all the pot one teams are going to be strong. You know, your England, France, Germany, uh, your England, you know, Brazil, all those teams, <clears throat> all those teams are going to be hard. Um, but, you know, I just feel like this is the, this is a good balanced, uh, group um i feel like england's definitely the favorite and then second i think it's up for grabs honestly i feel like you know depending if it's wales or ukraine i feel like it's really an up for grabs for second place so that's a tough group honestly all right not really what i want to hear okay but uh if i had to give a slight edge i'll give it to us okay I mean, no, you're right. I, I was just thinking myself. I was like, you know, Iran's not an easy out by any means. And I was like, Wales, I know Wales is pretty good. Uh, then obviously you got the whole Ukraine story and Scotland doesn't really worry me, unfortunately. But it's a very, uh, you know, England, Iran, U.S. And then you add in Ukraine. It's a very political kind of group. <laughs> It's a very political kind of group. It's pretty funny. It's a very um, geo- geopolitically relevant group. <laughs> but that's that's why I was laughing about this group. That is but, funny. I think that they threw that in there on purpose. Uh, but I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a fun group, though. I think I, this is the group I wanted for Iran personally. Like when the draws. When I was uh, yeah, I do Iran. remember you saying that on uh, Instagram. I think. Yeah, this is the group I wanted. So, like when I was watching it, and they had England, U.S. I was like, please put Iran in there because if they want to advance to the knockout, this is going to be their easiest path, easiest path to the next round. Because there's that my fear was Iran was going to be in Group E with Germany and Spain. That would have been a disaster because those two are like heavyweights right there. But I feel like England, U.S., and you know the Euro team. That's it's more manageable okay. to get out. So how about Group C? We got Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. Uh, I, think I that's feel a like fun group. I feel like Argentina and Mexico should be the favorite here, right? I'm gonna go. Well, I think Argentina is the favorite. I think the second one is gonna be a toss up between Mexico and Poland. Okay, I know Poland's Poland. pretty good though. Poland has uh, Robert Lewandowski, and he's a superstar. He's one of the best strikers in the world. If you know Poland goes as he goes, and um, Mexico did not look good in their qualifiers. I, I think Mexico looked really bad in their qualifiers. I personally, I think Con- Concacaf is the easiest region to qualify okay. from. So I think both the U.S. and Mexico, I feel like, had that benefit of playing in a in a sort of a weak region. <laughs> Um, I think Argentina is definitely the alpha of this group. And uh, Saudi Arabia is no slouch either. I think Saudi Arabia has definitely improved a lot, you know, just by watching a couple of their games, uh, you know, in the Asian region. I think, like, they've definitely improved a lot. 
in the last four years. Um, so I, I feel like they're a surprise team to look out, but I think it's going to come down to that Poland, Mexico. If I had to guess right now, I would say Argentina and Poland, but Mexico does tend to do well in the world cup. Uh, they did, they beat Germany the last time and they usually do make the knockouts. Yeah. So, they don't make that very far, but they do get there. They do get there. And honestly, if you're a team like the U S or the Mexico or Mexico and you make it to the knockouts, I feel like that's already like, you've already exceeded expectations. Yeah. Well, I just, rem- I know that Mexico always holds it over America that they're superior in soccer. But the thing is, is that Mexico hasn't made it as far as America in the World Cup. I think U.S. has made it to the quarterfinals, and Mexico has not. I, so. I, b- I believe so. I, I think you might be right on that. And the U.S. has been in Mexico in the last couple of years. Like, I think U.S. has won or drawn. I don't think U.S. has lost in the last five games against Mexico. I may be wrong on that, but I think U.S. lately has been owning Mexico. And why do they still act like they're holier than now? It's just pride. It's Mexico. (laughs) It's it's all they have. It's all they have. They don't have football. They don't have anything else. Well, they do. This is their football. All right. Group D, we got France. We got another uh, kind of play in. Who are these other teams here? Uh, the play-in one, I believe, if it's IC playoff one, I think that is um, – It says AFC and CONMEBOL winners. CONMEBOL. Oh, okay, okay. So that's going to be either Australia, uh, UAE, and uh, uh, Peru, I believe. Peru. Okay. Yeah, Peru. And then followed by Denmark and Tunisia. Uh, I, I think we both agree France is probably the top dog here. Uh Denmark, though, was high on that list of favorites. I feel like that's a team that's probably going to finish second here. I would agree with you. Denmark looked really good in the Euros, like really good. They, they exceeded a lot of uh, expectations. So I, I would agree with you. I think it's going to be a France-Denmark one. Tunisia is a solid team, but I feel like they're just one step below Denmark and France. Uh, I feel like the IC playoff team is most likely going to be Peru, if I had to guess. Maybe Australia. And that's a team, you know, I, I always uh, respect, I should say, those South American countries. But Peru is one of those countries that never really gets to the World Cup that often. Yeah, I think uh, 2018, I think they might have made the World Cup, but it was like their first World Cup in like 30, 40 years. Wow. So, so yeah, they're, 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 they're not really that much experience uh, in the World Cup. But I would say uh, France definitely the top dog. Uh, Denmark might beat them. Denmark is a good team. So uh, those are the two teams I would have to say. Okay, moving on to Group E. All right, we got another play in here. We got Spain, Germany, and Japan, and then it says CONCACAF and OFC. So CONCACAF is uh, Costa Rica, and the OFC is New Zealand. Um, okay. It doesn't matter who it is. They're going to finish last in that group, more, more than likely. Um, I feel bad for Japan. Uh, Japan's the best team out of Asia, and they got a rough end of the stick. Um, you know, compared to like Iran, Korea, you know, Saudi Arabia, they got the worst end of the stick. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like Japan's always decent. Yes. Same with like South Korea. They're always okay. They show up every now and then. They make the knockouts. Uh, I think last last time Japan. They almost beat Belgium. I think Belgium. You're right. You're right. I think Belgium had to come back from like three goals down to win or two maybe. But it was like a miracle. Yeah, they had like a, a 90th minute miracle to beat Japan. And I, I don't know if Japan made the knockout stage or if that was the knockout stage. Um, but Japan usually is really good in the World Cups. I just feel really bad. They got they ended up with Spain and Germany like that. You know, that was my fear with Iran is we might fall into these guys because whoever Germany was going to end up with, because they were a pot two team would have been the group of death. So uh, I feel bad for Japan. I think it's clear cut. It's going to be Spain, Germany as their top two. Now these are usually Spain and Germany, two teams that are almost always near the top and correct me if I'm wrong. I know Germany didn't qualify for the knockout last year. I don't believe Spain did either. They might have, or was bounced early in the knockout round. You're correct. Yes, Spain. Regardless, Spain. they both underperformed. Uh, what do you think of them this time around? 
Spain looked promising in the Euros. Uh, they had a very young roster come, uh, you know, in the past Euros, and they ex- um, I think Spain's going to be good. They might be, I think they're one of the six favorites. Uh, Germany is always, you know, they're always a powerhouse team. Right. Uh, I don't know what to expect from them this World Cup because they looked, they looked okay in the Euros, but not as good. And then the last World Cup, they, they were horrible. So um, I think, you know, I think both will go out of the knockout. It just really depends who they face and what part of the bracket they're going to be in in the knockout. If I have to say right now, I don't think they are true title contenders. So I got another question while we're on the subject. What's going on in Italy? This is twice now the Italians have not qualified for the World Cup, and it's becoming less and less relevant from the movie Kicking and Screaming, Give the Ball to the Italians, if you have yeah, that reference. Yeah, I don't know what happened to them because they just won the European title. They they oh. just won the, they just won the Euros, so they played phenomenal in the Euros. So I don't know what happened to them. Uh, they lost to Macedonia, which is like the equivalent of St. Peter's beating Kentucky. Hmm. So it was like a massive upset, and uh, I don't know what happened to them. Honestly, that's that was a shocker. I did I did not expect that, especially on their own home turf. Oh, they hosted. They, yeah, it was it was on their own home turf. Uh, in the 90th minute. So it was like a, it was a shocker. Wow. Interesting. Italy is always a team, you know, if the U S is out, I don't know, like England is always up there. And then if I had to put a second, it'd probably be Italy for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know. I love Italian food. So I guess that's why, but uh, oh, yeah. when I saw, all the, I, I got the uh, alert on my phone or whatever, the notification said Italy doesn't qualify for second straight world cup. I was like, what the heck is going on? because that's usually you know one of the maybe not lately but has been one of the top countries in soccer yeah they just won the euros too so them not qualifying was a shocker if they would have qualified i would have said they were a top five favorite to win it all wow so i'm I'm shocked that they didn't even qualify and they had the same team from their euro championship and uh they were dominant in the euros too so them not qualifying was a huge shocker well, in 2026, correct me if I'm wrong, it does expand to 48 teams instead of 32. So yes. their odds of getting in should be better. I don't think it's by much, though. Like, I think I they're – Yeah, I think they gain – I think your, the European teams, they gain four or five, three or four more teams. So surely they'll get in next time. Which, let's be honest, you're expanding at 16 more teams – and you're telling me that at least half of those teams shouldn't be European teams? I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that's like telling the SEC, no, 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 no. You can't have, you know, more than four teams or whatever in the, a New Year's Six Bowl game. Yeah. Pretty much it, yeah. I don't so, know. I think uh, that's ridiculous. I, personally, I'm not a fan of it. I think – you know, it's, it's going to water down the, the product when you go to 48 teams. I mean, obviously they're doing it for money. Right. People loves money. Um, but, you know, I would not like it. It's sort of like the NCAA tournament. They go to 100 teams and just, you know, everyone's in at that point. You know, it just sort of waters down the product. You know, next thing you'll know, you'll, you'll see Georgia basketball in that NCAA tournament on a regular basis. So, you know, I don't like it. I think 32 is just fine um it keeps them more special i mean there's there's talks of them doing the world cup every two years and i feel like that would walk i mean it's fun for the fans but i just it, it waters down the product a lot you know it makes it less special but you know surely next world cup italy will make it all right moving <laughs> on to group f we have belgium canada morocco and croatia croatia obviously was a big storyline in 2018 Belgium has been historic, not historically, but recently pretty dang good. And then you just mentioned Canada has some or two of the best players in the world. Uh, What do you think? I feel like, I mean, I, I want to say Belgium and Croatia, but from what you told me about Canada, sounds like I need to give our friends to the North some love. I think this is a very balanced group. A lot of people are saying this is a good group uh, depth wise from top to bottom. Yeah. Cause even Uh, Morocco's, I mean, 
not that. I bad. think they're the dark horse. I think Morocco's the dark horse. Uh, Morocco last World Cup, uh, even though they didn't advance to the knockouts, they they played really good, and they got some really good players playing in top teams. Um, I think Belgium. I think Belgium and Croatia are the two favorites for sure. But I would not be surprised at all if one one of them did not qualify for the knockouts. Um, I think both Canada and Morocco could definitely make some noise. They're both very, very sneaky teams. Interesting. Very, very interesting. <clears throat> All right. Group G, we have Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. I don't um, know a whole lot about Serbia. I know Switzerland's okay, though. And obviously Brazil is, you know, the Alabama kind of of soccer. Yeah, this is this is sort of giving me uh this is sort of like one of those groups sort of similar to the Mexico Argentina group where you're going to have that one alpha and then you're going to have three teams fighting for that second spot. Um I think Brazil's going to sweep the group and then really it's going to be a, a a coin flip. Um I think it's going to come down to Switzerland and Serbia and I, if I have to say Switzerland is probably the favorite to go second. They just beat France in the Euros. So they're a pretty good team. Um, so I think Switzerland would be that second team if I had to guess. And then rounding it out, Group H, we got Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and South Korea. See, to me, this seems like the toughest group. This is the most balanced group. I think it's going to be the most fun group. Um, I think, you know, your favorite, Portugal, they might not even get out of this group, honestly. Yeah, so I remember you saying back in 2018 – because I we were going to do basically doing the same thing that, uh, this time around four years ago, and I said, "Oh well, Portugal will get out of this group or whatever." And you said, "I'm not convinced they're going to get out of this group at all." No, I think they ended up doing it, and actually winning a game. I think in the knockout round, but there were times I believe in that 2018 Cup where their age, and I remember you talking about their age, uh, really showed. Uh, what is the deal with Portugal this time around? Because Ronaldo is still playing, and he ain't exactly young. Yeah, he's 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 up there. They're still having age issues. A lot of the same players from the last World Cup are still there. Um, they're one of those teams where it's really hard to um, to pick out. Like you don't know what kind of Portugal team you're gonna get. You know, they're either gonna be really good or they're not gonna be good. I think they're a 50-50 kind of team. Out of all the pot one teams, I think they're certainly the weakest. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, this is a very balanced group. I think anything can go in this group, honestly. I think Korea can, you know, they can make noise. Uruguay can Yeah, make I was going to say, so Portugal is usually pretty good. Ghana, though, is scrappy. Uruguay is scrappy. And South Korea is due for a win every so often. Yeah, so I, I still think Portugal is going to come out of there. They, I, I feel like talent-wise, they're still superior to all these teams, but – That'll be a fun group. I'm, I'm definitely going to keep a close close eye on that group uh, when it comes to the World Cup. Oh, gosh. For those listening, we're recording this at 12, 11 p.m. So I'm a little tired. Nodder, I think, works late. But I'm usually yeah. well in the bed at this hour. <laughs> uh, so I am curious. How much do you think – because they pushed it back. Usually it's uh, the, the World Cup starts in like June and goes to the end of July. This time around, it's being played in November and December uh, because of the heat over in uh, Qatar. How much of that is going to be a problem? Not, I'm not talking the heat. I'm more talking about pushing the, pushing it back a while. Uh, I don't think it'll be much of a factor pushing it back. Uh, I think a lot of it is, um, you know, because of COVID, they push a lot of these games back to begin with. But it helps out all these teams because you're going to, you know, if it was in the summer, you're looking at 110, 20 degrees in the Qatar uh, heat. I think come November, it's going to be more like 90 degrees over there. <laughs> still still hot, but yeah, I, I guess more manageable. And apparently they're going to have these uh, nice uh, cooling systems in their stadiums, state-of-the-art cooling systems. So that's supposed to help too. Um, the only thing that sucks – for us is you know that's in the middle of football season so yeah so I remember seeing a tweet uh after the group b was announced and it was you know like England and U.S. are playing I think November uh 25th and someone said we got Thanksgiving I think it was on the 24th U.S. and uh England on the 25th and then the 26th is rivalry week for college football 
<laughs> the Iron Bowl, yeah, the Iron Bowl. Yeah, the Iron Bowl, yeah. And uh, I looked up the kickoff times. The kickoff times are like super early. Like some of the games yeah, are like there, five, you know. I would imagine six or eight hours ahead of us. I know London is about five hours ahead of us, and yes. Tar is even further uh, east. Yeah, so like the Tar is like nine hours ahead, eight eight nine hours ahead. So all of the kickoff times are going to be super early in the morning. Uh, so like you're talking like five, six, seven, eight in the morning for all these kickoff times. So uh, man, I love America. I'm not sure I'm getting up that early. Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily I think. Uh, U.S. England game. It is 1 p.m. So okay. you know, 1 p.m. Central time. So I think for that game, it should be good. But all the other games are gonna be super early. It depends. I mean, if if we're playing on a Saturday, I'm, I'm maybe I'll get up. Of course, you know, I get up at 6:30, so maybe I'll be able to catch the tail end of a game or something. Yeah. But uh, that's very interesting. So if it was played tomorrow. Who are you picking to win it all? Um, if it's tomorrow, I'm going to go with France. France, really? I'm going to go with France to repeat, which it never <laughs> happens. That's completely Yeah, I was going to ask, when do you think the last time a country repeated as World Cup champs? I think it's probably been like 80, 70, 80 really? years ago. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't, it's very rare for a team to repeat. Um but I just feel like talent-wise, they have the most talent. They're coming off of di- disappointing Euros, which I feel like could motivate them. And they got – they have some of the best players in the world playing on that team. So, if I had to pick – if I had to give a prediction, I would say France right now. Uh, Brazil would probably be my second one, but I would say France for right now. I'm curious – Well, I wonder if I can look up what France's odds were in 2018. That caused me to pick them. Of course, I didn't really look at the odds. I just played the matchups. And I and I love France. I, I always like to, you know, I always support them. Um, so, so last I'm, time around, France was thirteen to two odds. I don't really know what that means. I'm not a much of a gambler, but they were roughly what was that? One, two, three, fourth on the list. All right. So, um. I, I'm not going to like it, but I'm going to go with England here. I, rem- I remember you saying back in 2018 that 2022 is probably going to shape up that this is England's best shot. Yes. So a lot of those young players off that 2018 team, they're coming, they're hitting their prime now. Yeah. Uh, they're coming off of very close Euros. And so. the heartbreak in 2018 uh, World Cup too. So they should be motivated to – hit that next gear and uh you know but it, it, honestly it comes down to how the bracket looks in the knockout you know right. 2018 france benefited a lot uh because a lot of uh super you know the super teams got knocked out there was a lot of upsets and they sort of have, they sort of had an easy road to the final and you know they played croatia which is usually not a superpower team yeah so they benefited from an easy road in 2018 so it really depends on the bracket but England, I think, is a good one. That's a that's sort of like that France from 2018, sort of a dark. Yeah, form. it's just it's never the favorite usually, um, really for any sport. But and I don't know, I Brazil, I hear it every year. And how many World Cups have they won in the last 20 years? I think. Well, they won. last one. In, they last one in 2002. But yeah, ever since 2002. No I doubt. hear a lot of talk about Brazil, and I don't see many results. Of course, you could say the same with France before I picked them, and England too now, but I'm just saying. I don't really buy France. They always find a, seem to find a way to screw it up. Of course, so does England. But England, I feel like England, the thing with England is I, as much – I would like for England to win, but I feel like if there's a such thing as a cursed team, that's England. <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell which one of those uh, countries are more like Green Bay, Brazil or England. Uh, well, I feel like Green Bay now is sort of like cursed, but you know, at least we've won a championship in the last fifteen years. Uh, but I feel like Green Bay in the last eight nine years is sort of cursed, especially come playoff time. Like we'll be the best regular season team. 
come playoff time, I feel like we'll just lose the first game we play. I keep hope. I keep telling myself, well, maybe this year we won't be the best like regular season team. Like we won't get home field and we'll have to scrap and call to get to the Super Bowl. And then I look at the schedule. I look at the division. And I'm like, probably not. We'll probably get 13 wins again and get home field again. Because <laughs> honestly, I mean, if you look at the schedule, the schedule is one of the easier ones in the league. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've I've tempered my expectations. But oh, I, I am I, too. Like, you I, know, I'm. This past year against San Francisco broke me. I'm like, I, I do not trust this team anymore. Don't yeah. tell me how the Rams are looking. Don't tell me how the Bucks are looking. Don't tell me how any other team is looking. Don't tell me about the injuries. I don't want to hear them. Green Bay will find a way to screw it up. <laughs> yeah, and coming, you know, before the whole Brady thing coming back. I was like, wow, Tampa, that's one less team to worry about now. It's just the Rams. <laughs> now Brady comes back like, oh, God, we got to worry about them again. Yeah, but now Bruce Harrigan's is gone. I, it's still Tom Brady run the I show. Know. So I so, think it's a bigger deal than most think, but not that much. Like, I, I'm still probably going to pick the Bucks, you know, to represent the NFC. I still, I think it's gonna be the Rams. I think they're they just reload. The Rams had their moment. I don't know. I I was hard on the Rams uh, this time last year. I was like, I don't see it. And then they won the Super Bowl. But I think next year I got the Bills winning it all. I feel like Bills. So know, James Josh, and I are huge Josh Allen fans. We we oh, yeah. are as we said we are huge. We are a pro Josh Allen podcast. And yeah, we we so we have both kind of latched onto the Bills as our adopted team when Philly or Green Bay are eliminated. That, they're sort of my adopted team. If I had a side team, it would be the Bills. They're the team that I really want to win, this, you know, the AFC. I don't, obviously, if it's against the Packers, I'm rooting for the Packers, but right. not a second team. I don't, want that, I don't want that to ever happen. Like, if it's Bills, Packers, I'm, I, I would hate for that to happen because I don't want Buffalo to lose a fifth Super Bowl, even though – I'm going to not I'm not going to apologize for potentially winning a Super Bowl, but it's not going to bring me as much pleasure because I'm depriving the city of Buffalo and my boy Josh Allen. Of I do think Josh Allen is going to be the face of the NFL if he isn't already. Like, I think I don't I think know if he's going to surpass Mahomes, like in terms of branding and face of the NFL. OK, well, yeah, maybe as, as far as branding, I feel like Mahomes, you know, with Tyreek Hill gone, I'm a little bit worried about that team now. I think Tyreek Hill's a big factor. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is. I, I thought about that myself. I'm a, I'm a, always a quarterback first guy. As long as you have the quarterback, nothing else really matters a whole lot. But I will say there were times this past year where Mahomes wasn't getting it done and Tyreek Hill had to help him out a lot. Or you know, found Kelsey. a way to squeak open or something and they pick up a big first down or something and get the win, and you almost had to exhale every time. <clears throat> I'm sure if or, you're a Chiefs fan. Or Travis Kelsey, but I feel like, you know, Travis Kelsey's getting older and older. So, you know, I, I feel like their window's closing, and then you have other teams getting better. Like, you have the Bengals getting oh, better. Dude, the AFC is insane. They're getting better. The Browns just got a quarterback, so the Browns can make some noise. If, well, if we'll, see if he, we'll see if he can play. He's probably going to get suspended. Yeah, so teams are getting teams are getting stronger and stronger. Dolphins are getting stronger now. Patriots. Yeah, are but stronger. I know I know you're a Bama guy and you're gonna hype up Tua, but I don't think the Dolphins are gonna get it are gonna be that good. They, I will say that they might finish second in the AFC East because I think that Mike McDaniel hire was really underrated. Oh but, yeah, uh, I don't see them really being a playoff team. I, I say dark horse next year for me is the Chargers. That's my dark horse. Dark horse. See, I've been too busy thinking about baseball, and I had a dark horse for baseball. Now i got to shift gears. <sighs> Football. Well, I got I got a comment on baseball too, by the way. What's that? The baseball. I'm a. I'm a. Oh, I got a comment on baseball too. I'm a big Braves guy. So Braves. Uh, I thought you were a Dodgers guy for whatever reason. I know you're a Lakers guy. I am a Lakers guy, but I don't like the Dodgers. I hate the okay. Dodgers. Braves. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're the defending world champs. Oh yeah. I, I think we have a good chance to, def uh, to repeat, but we'll see. I worry about pitching. 
for the Braves? So they have a lot of young pitchers, like really young, like 25 years old. <laughs> I think I, last I checked, at least. I feel like with our core, like you know, we have um, Max Freed, yeah. uh, Anderson. I'm not saying they're not talented, but they are just young. They are young, but now that they got a World Series True. experience under the belt, I think they're going to be really good. And their bullpen just – their bullpen got a lot better now. They, they added a couple of really good arms in the bullpen. And me personally, as, as sad as it was to lose Freddie Freeman – Well, you got, got – what, who was it, Matt Olson? We got Matt Olson, which I'm a fan of. But I, I think, you know, I think business-wise it, it was – Yeah, it's a, as good as it gets. And you, you save money, you go resign. Uh, Rosario, you go resign. Um, uh, I don't know who it was, but they brought a good chunk of that team back. I think they just lost Solaire, they lost Jock Peterson, and then of, of course, Freddie. And that's pretty much it. No, the Braves will be, th- th- I think they're a well run organization, they have a good manager. Uh, they'll be fine, but defending in base, defending a championship in baseball is incredibly difficult to do. That's why it hardly ever happens. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're probably the second best team in the NL, I would say. Yeah, Dodgers, I think, are going to be the clear favorites. I, I want them to lose, but I think they're going to be the clear favorites. I think uh, – We can only root against the Dodgers so often. St- my, You know Steven, though. He went to high school with us. Steven Copper. Uh, he comes on and talks baseball with me. And we always say all the time, we're like, look at all these guys for the Dodgers. They're all under contract for five years. Almost all of them are the best player at their position. On top of that, they have one of the deepest farm systems in the league. Like, this team isn't going away for – and and you factor in money that they have. This team isn't going away for a long, long time. (laughs) I can't wait to the day baseball inherits a a cap space. uh, It'll never happen, but I hear you. Yeah, I, I've been wanting a salary cap system for the longest in baseball. Well, they, they technically do. They have a threshold. The problem is there are only about four teams in the league who can reach said threshold. Yeah. Yankees, Dodgers, throwing the Cubs, maybe the Boston. Astros. Yeah, b- 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 Boston's better. Yeah. So – yeah, and that's the reason why I don't like the Dodgers. I, I don't like the teams that just throw out well, money on I actually defend the Dodgers. Unlike <laughs> the Yankees in recent, recent years, not necessarily now, the Dodgers built from within. Almost every single player on the Dodgers came up through with the Dodgers. Sure, they got Mookie Betts. They just got Freddie Freeman and Trevor Bauer. But those were like the only examples. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, as far as that part, yeah, they're more respected. I, I'm Yankees. sorry. I thought that's what you were going for. Yeah, Yankees. I, I've never liked the Yankees at all. That's they're they're like the, well, they're the, like the evil empire of the yeah. of the whole you know, of all baseball. No one likes the Yankees. No. Nah. <laughs> but I think a dark horse for baseball. I think it's the Cards. I think Cards are a dark horse this year. Cardinals. Cards and the Jays. Uh, those are two. Dark oh horses. well, I don't think the Jays are a dark horse. I, I think the Jays are going to be really, really good. Um, are we talking dark horse championship team or dark horse playoff team? Uh, championship teams. If I if I'm going dark horse playoff team, like a team that hasn't really been in the playoffs, that's going to make it. I think Phillies might be one. I don't know if they're a dark. Uh, if you consider that a dark horse, I, I was just saying. I was trying to think of one for both I, the other day, actually, and I think the Phillies came to mind for the NL. If I'm talking championship team. I mean, Blue Jays is so easy. Uh, I want to say the Rays, but I just feel I'm, like... I'm going to say, actually, the Seattle Mariners. Okay, that's a good one. I, I say watch yeah. out. They won, like, 92 games last year and missed the playoffs, and they just signed or uh, acquired guys like Eugenio Suarez and uh, Jesse Winker from the Reds and somebody else. I don't remember who. Robbie uh, Ray. They got Robbie yes, Ray. Yes, yes, Robbie Ray. Uh yeah. I think that's a, that's a team to watch. Granted, the, the Mariners are, you know, like the Detroit Lions or anyone else. Like, yeah. if you picture them in the World Series, it just seems weird. But I, I think that is my dark horse championship team. My dark horse playoff teams, I've said the Phillies in the NL and the one in the AL is the Detroit uh, Tigers. 
I almost said twins. I think twins. I could see that. Twins I did. was I see, I thought that team was gonna it was entering rebuild, but they actually signed some guys. They still have some guys on their roster right now. Uh, even though they were sellers, I guess you could say at the deadline last year. <clears throat> it felt like though it was over with that team, like their window had closed after they had had a good run in recent years. But that's not the case, and they got some good players. I think that is a sneaky team to watch. But I'm gonna yeah, go with Tigers. Carlos Correa. Well, they got, yeah, they, well, they got Carlos Correa. I'm sorry, you're right. I'm thinking of Javier Baez. Baez went to the uh, Tigers, but yeah, Tigers. A lot of young talent. Signed some guys. They uh, like Javier Baez. They got uh, Tucker Barnhart from the Reds. Um, just some veterans. I like a good mix of youth and talented youths and uh, veterans. And the the rain, I feel like the Rangers to be another sneaky playoff team. They just they made some good signings as well. I don't know where they're at necessarily with their pitching. Yeah, but I don't know maybe the Rangers. Yeah, I as it, as it stands right now, I'm getting my predictions together. I have them finishing last in that division. Okay. I'm like I feel like they could be better than that, honestly. Yeah. Well, they just signed what Simeon, uh, Marcus Simeon, and. Uh, they signed someone else. Was it Seeger that might have signed? I don't know. Maybe. I didn't pay attention, honestly. Um, but they always seem to just come out of nowhere when you least expect it. It yeah. happened. It's happened at least once or twice where I'm like, I blink in July and, wait, the Rangers are leading the AL? Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised by the Chris Bryant to the Rockies signing. I was like, how, where did that come from? Yeah, I don't get that when you're in clear rebuild mode why are you spending money on a guy i mean unless you're trying to sell tickets which i get but yeah it just doesn't make a so, lot of sense to me I'm, I'm not if you're gonna suck why bother spending money that but that's my opinion i guess the good news is just be happy we have a season this year i i there, there was a part of me where i was like i don't think the season's gonna happen no so, i i wouldn't have gotten that far I thought, though, they were – it was going to affect the length, though. I I thought it was going to be about 140 or 120 games. And we're getting the full okay. season. Well, that's good. Yeah. So, we're. I mean, I'm happy about that. Uh, good to see the Braves defend. I'm hoping, you know, we can make it deep. But we'll see. Well, like I said, I think second best team in the NL. And I'll be honest, I think the Braves kind of got away with one last year. Yeah. No, no disrespect at all. It happens though, from time to time. A team kind of <laughs> sneaks away. You like the clear favorite in the NL last year was, uh, you know, any of the NL West teams that made it, like the Giants or the Dodgers. I forget who the other wild card was. I think it was the Cardinals who were red hot before entering, and somehow the yeah. Braves ended up coming out of the NL. And I was like, how the heck did that happen? Because I think they had injuries and just a magical run. And kudos, they, uh, but it really, it, again, not taking anything away, but it does feel like he kind of got away with one. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people picked the Brewers to beat the Braves. Yes, I did. Round. I like the Brewers. The Brewers had a you know really good pitching staff. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people picked them to beat the Braves, but then I feel like after we beat well, the, the Braves Brewers, won the division, and I don't even think they won ninety games. I was like, Ugh. I mean, they're hot, and that was one thing I said when the playoffs started. I was like, they're hot, but I'm not sure they have enough right now. And I think it all came down to it all came down to uh, down to those four guys they got at the deadline. That was probably the best deadline pickups ever, probably. Like you got four, who they were. Uh, Soler, Rosario, oh, yeah. Jock Peterson, and then the fourth one was uh, Duvall. We got Duvall. Ah, good old Adam Duvall he used to be with the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, <laughs> he was, he was an all star, I think, with the Reds. He was he had some decent years. Reds are in complete, uh, complete rebuild now. Dude, the that. Reds suck. <laughs> if, you I, want to say, if you want to say someone's like the Lions of the baseball, I think it's probably going to be the Reds now. No, I don't think they're the Lions. The Lions are uh, <laughs> you know, like the Mariners. Like the Reds have been really good. It's yeah. been a long time, but they have been really good. <laughs> you know, I, I would say they're more – trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to think of teams like maybe like the now Washington Commanders. 
you know, that's a good one. That's a good used one. Used to be really good, you know, back in the eighties, nineties. Although the Reds were more seventies and eighties, but have really been irrelevant ever since. Yeah, or, or or you could say maybe the Jets. Jets have been, I guess, they were decent. They won and one. Then, they won yeah. once. I don't know. I'll, I'll say Washington. I could probably come up with a better one though. That was just yeah, Washington's a good Washington. I feel like it's a good one. They're like. They're always like a middle of the pack kind of team. I think they're poor. I have to hear it every day from my dad and my brother. Just how how much they suck. Who they trade? Who would who they trade now? And it's a <laughs> joke. And the other team I like is the Mets, and they always seem to blow it too. Oh my god! I don't I hate the Mets? I, I mean, I love them because my grandfather was a big Mets fan, so I, I cheer for them in honor of him. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, they always seem to blow. <laughs> and I, unlike the Reds, they have money now, and they can spend it, although they just gave Scherzer, what, $40 million a year or something <laughs> crazy? It was like three years, 120, and then they just lost the Grom for a while, so. Yeah, um, at least they have Scherzer. But, and he's opting out anyway after the season here, they said, to Grom. Oh, wow. Which I expected his contract when he signed this contract. I, I forget when. But I was like, that seems like a low ball. And then now yeah. other guys are signing big deals, and he's like, uh, I want that money. I feel like I Mets are always. Money. I feel like Mets are always one of those teams that start out really good, and then like towards the end, of the well, out. Well, they definitely were. That's, that's, that's just were, how I feel about the Mets. They were what above five hundred. I forget what I read. It was something like, but they're the only. They were the only team last year who was above 500 after 100 games and finished below 500. And they were they were leading the division going into August. I remember yeah. too because it, it took a while for the Braves to finally like have control of that division. And I remember the Mets. They were they were leading that division for a good portion of the season. So oh, they choked. They choked. Yeah. Injuries, I'm sure, had a lot to do with that too. But they choked. It's one of those teams that just fizzle out. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I'm I'm still not in baseball mode yet. I'm still in. Uh, I guess you better be getting mode. there because baseball is in less than a week. I'm still in that basketball mode, but I think once NBA is over, you know, Lakers suck this year, then I'll probably get more into baseball mode. Well, p- NBA playoffs don't start for a few weeks, so like I guess gonna... baseball starts in less than a week. If you had to have a NBA Finals prediction right now, who you got? You know, the last two years, and last year was really the first time that I really enjoyed the playoffs because it wasn't the usual suspects. It wasn't LeBron. It wasn't the Warriors or whoever. I thoroughly enjoyed watching, like, the Suns, and I forget who they played in the West, and then, like, the Hawks and the Bucks uh, last year. This year, again, I think it's pretty wide open. I don't think there's really one team like, oh, it's going to be that team. Um, you might disagree. I would say probably <clears> – I'm going to say the Suns out of the West just because I like uh, some of their players. East, wide open. I don't really trust the Bucks. No, I'm sorry, not the Bucs. Uh, I, I was going to say the Heat. Um, the Bucks feel, but they're another team too. The Bucks feel like they kind of got away with them last year. <laughs> they kind of snuck into the finals, and then they won it when they were down two zero. Uh, I'm I, I like my Celtics, but do I trust my Celtics? I don't know. Um, we I'll say a rematch of last year right now. J, uh, not Jazz, Suns and Bucks. That's what I had too. I had Suns and Bucks as well. I think Suns have a better road than the Bucks do. I think East is wide open. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm going to say Suns because Warriors are slipping a little bit. Um, yeah. And the Grizzlies are the second seed in the West. They're the second seed. Yeah. So I don't know if they can maintain that in the playoffs. That's just unfamiliar familiar territory for them. So I was just about to say, if they meet like the Warriors in the second round, I feel like the Warriors ought to win that series, but you never know. Yeah. So I'm going to say Suns. I, I think Suns might win it all this year. East, I think Bucks, Nets, 
Or I forgot about the Nets. Yeah, I think I think it's Bucks to the Nets. I think when K, I think Katie's the best friend in the world when he's when he's dialed in. I think he's a he's a cheat code when it comes on when it comes to offense. There's nothing to stop KD. Like it's just unfair. He's seven foot, shoots three pointers at will. Well, there's what three or four teams in the East that are within three games game of first team. place, roughly. Yeah, Miami. Uh, I think the, the Nets are a seven or eight seed right now, but the, right. I feel like that that doesn't matter. No, I time. think it's Heat, Bucks, Celtics, and I think it's the Sixers. And then yeah, you have the Nets if they can make it. Uh, Looking at a playing game, I think as a seven or eight, unless they can get a top six. Uh, and I, I, I do think that's a scary team. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, if they I stay in. Yeah, I feel like once they don't get, uh, make it, I feel like once playoffs start, the seedings don't really matter. It's just whoever's the best teams at that point. Um, I feel like the Nets are a scary team. If you have, if you have Kyrie and KD playing, I feel like that's, they're going to give you a chance to win any time. Um, so, and like I said, I think Katie's still the best player in the world. That's, I think he's a cheat code. Um, but I still think it's the Bucks. I feel like the Bucks, they have their, their really good balance team. They still have Giannis. Giannis is, I think, still one of the best players in the world, obviously, MVP candidate. Um, if the Celtics I, can't win, say, I'm cheering on the Bucks just because of that Wisconsin connection and because West Virginia's own Javon Carter. Uh, it sounds like he's playing some significant minutes for them and is doing pretty well. Yeah. The Celtics, you know, I got I got uh, Jason Tatum on my fantasy team. I got him and Marcus Smart. Um, they're good. I think Jason Tatum is a superstar. Um, I just feel like outside of him and Jalen Brown, I don't – I feel like they need something else, yeah. especially like – especially down low. I feel like they need – a better interior play yeah and so, uh, like, just, i think robert williams just got hurt so they're hurting yeah like if, if you're playing philadelphia who's gonna guard joel and bead that's my that's my uh that's my thing so i mean i'm not sure they'll play him in the first round but later at some point definitely um Trying to think who else I was going to talk to. Oh, I was going to comment on your seating doesn't matter. I don't think seating matters, but home court does. Yes. And I'm not saying the Nets can't go for or a series or two and win <laughs> without home court, but can they go three or four? And I think that's going to be difficult. The NBA is one of those leagues where if you don't have home court, it's hard to win it all. Oh, yeah. And almost every single series in the NBA goes last year. They were, yeah. So it just really, yeah, it really depends. Um, Nets last year they came really close to winning it all because I think it, all it took was KD stepping on the line, and I had yeah. the Bucks going to the. That's, and that's what I meant. The Bucks kind of squeaked their way in through uh, an inch of KD's foot. Sort of like the Braves. Bucks were sort of like Braves. They just they got hot when it mattered. They just sort of snuck their way in there and won. That's it what all, I meant. So. That's what I meant. Yeah. No so. disrespect to either, but it felt like you got away with one. Hey, that's what happened. Certainly don't apologize. I, I, for I feel like that about Georgia football too. I feel like they just got away with one as well. <laughs> I don't know about it. I don't think an ass kicking is getting away with one. I, I feel like if. Well, Alabama. it wasn't an ass kicking. If Alabama was healthy, that would have been a closer game. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. I feel like if we had our top guys, our receivers mainly, I feel like it'd been a completely different result. So when, when Williams got hurt, the, the that game shifted. Yeah, wheels kick because first three quarters we had the lead for the majority of the first three quarters, and then the wheels came off in the fourth. So yeah. you know, we'll see. It should. I mean. You're going to say yes, but should Bama be considered the favorite this year for college football? Um, I mean, you got Bama. probably the best player offensively in the country and probably, I don't even think probably, the best defensive player in the country. I'm going to say Bama and Ohio State are the top two favorites. Um, I think Bama, keep an eye out for Jameer Gibbs. I think that guy's going to be a stud this year. So. I'm just worried about our receivers. I'm 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 waiting to see who's going to step up and be that alpha come you know, on the receiving team. 
Uh, I'm hearing Ajay Hall is maybe one of them, or and I hear a lot of names. Look, like Alabama. Look, I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to be an asshole here. I don't want to hear <laughs> Bama questioning the players on their rosters. I don't know about our receivers. I don't know about our DBs. You're fucking Alabama. You got <laughs> dudes on the field. We'll that's see. that's we'll where see. I am. We'll see. I, I will say this. Texas A&M is, is on the come up, though, with all these recruits they're getting. Yeah. Texas A&M is on the come up. So, I'm, I, I think they're a big dark horse to beat Alabama, maybe. Yeah, but in that game in Tuscaloosa this year, that is in Tuscaloosa, and I feel like Alvin was going to come for blood this year. So, so this year, yeah. So, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping we get Arch Manning, too, and we just keep the train rolling. But Yeah, yeah, I don't know what that, what's going to happen. I, <laughs> I uh, Did you watch much of that Manning cast for Monday Night Football? I've seen a couple of them. I've they had one, one with Pat McAfee, and, you know, Pat McAfee went to West Virginia – and they had McAfee on and, you know, him and Peyton played together at Indianapolis. And so they were kind of riffing back and forth. And McAfee finally asked him, you know, hey, Peyton, where's Arch going to go? And Peyton said, just talking out of his ass, said, you know what, Pat, I've tried to talk him out of it, but he's going to go to West Virginia. And he went on and was just, and he actually had some knowledgeable things. He said he loves, you know, some of our greats like Major Harris and Pat White and all this stuff. I was like, okay. And then, like, the next – within the next week, you know, obviously West Virginia fans are freaking out, even though 90% of us knew it was a joke. And the next week, like, Arch Manning leaked his official visit list or something, and West Virginia wasn't on it, and which obviously that was going to be the case. And I was like, damn, man, already? <laughs> You're already leaving us? <laughs> like, you gave us all that hope and – you know, we're not, we don't have to make the list on a visit. That's just, that's one of those things, you know, we all, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's always a joke with West Virginia fans. Like we almost got so-and-so, which sometimes we do. Like I remember uh, the quarterback at Ohio state, Troy Smith, who won the Heisman. He, we almost got him at one point, but it's always kind of that we almost, and then like old, you know, fake stories, and now we can add Arch Manning to that. You know, Arch Manning, he almost, almost pulled the so, trigger. Uh, on, when, on the West Virginia topic, is Neil Brown still y'all's coach? Neil Brown? Yeah. What do you think about Neil Brown? Because I mean, he was at Troy. I liked him at Troy. <sighs> what do you think about Neil Brown? Uh, I loved him when we hired him. I'm losing faith by the day. <laughs> He he had me convinced after the first two years, and this past year I, I've just I've lost hope, and we're losing players to transfers left and right. Uh, just not looking good, and I don't care what he tells me. He's a I think he's an old car or a used car salesman. <laughs> I really don't want to hear it. I want to see some fucking results. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. I'm just, I'm sick of hearing it. He keeps saying, and, you know, the fans say it too. Well, we're recruiting, well, which we are. I mean, by West Virginia standards, we are. Uh, you know, we're recruiting probably the best we've ever been. <clears throat> but I'm like, I don't give a shit. I want to win. <laughs> so, West Virginia, what are they going to do once the – are they going to stay in the Big 12, or what's going to happen with them long term? Well, for now, they're going to. Uh and I don't disagree with it. Hang on to that lifeboat while you can. Okay. Uh, I mean, where else are you going to go? I was thinking they should go to the ACC, like, you know, re- well, geographically. The ACC and us have a bad history. They have expanded twice. <laughs> and each time they have passed on West Virginia. So, I, I, I look, I agree with what you're saying. In a perfect world, yeah, that's where we should be. But it's happened or, the big, or maybe the Big Ten. That'd be the other option. <laughs> They're too snooty. They're too focused on academia, and they look down their noses at us. Honestly, I, the conference that I don't think would do that is the SEC. Okay. 
I'm not saying we're a fit. I'm not saying it should happen, but I think it came close in 2011. They chose Missouri, but it came this close to being West Virginia in the SEC. But I, they're the only conference, I think, where they would not look down at us. They would say, okay. Come on in. I would love it, but I, I we'll feel like see. I'm all for staying where we are. I mean, no need to jump ship. Make Oklahoma and Texas stay. Pay us a contract to buy out. Stay on this lifeboat while we can. But eventually, it's going to run out. Like the Big East, it's eventually going to run out. And we're going to yeah. have to jump ship at some point. But for now, stay on the lifeboat. I'm all for it. But eventually, I've theorized this recently. I think eventually the SEC is either just going to take over or it's going to be a two-conference system with the Big Ten and the SEC. That's what I think is going to eventually happen. Or, I mean, I feel like ACC is expanding too. Well, the ACC is next, I yeah. think. Because their con- it, within the next decade, I, I think, their contract is up in 2036. And they are actually have a worse uh, contract than the Big 12. <clears throat> People don't realize that, but they do. Clemson and Florida State, I'm sure, aren't happy with their payout right now. The SEC is going to get them. It's only a matter yeah, of Yeah, that's what I think, too. That's only a matter of Clemson time. and Florida State. And Georgia we'll Tech. Them, I mean, those three. And when that happens, all hell – well, I don't know about all hell breaking loose yet, but it's going to be a scramble. Yeah. When it becomes all hell breaking loose, I think is when the SEC calls up Ohio State and Michigan. And honestly, like as a fan looking at this, I feel like it's sad. It's sort of it's a different it's different from what I grew up with watching. You know, I like the whole different conferences. I don't like these super conferences. I don't like these one or two conferences just overpowering each other. Well, you know, I've thought about it and I, I don't maybe it's just me being the optimist. But I think it could still get to that point. And, but the only way I think that's going to happen is if the SEC pretty much – or the Big Ten, but it's more likely the SEC is just going to take over. Yeah. They're going to go and get these big elite programs and maybe get some Tier 2 kind of schools like a West Virginia or a – I'm trying to think, you know, Virginia Tech, Louisville, those kind of schools, which they might. And then it'll, they'll basically just have the entire blueprint. They'll be the governing body of this league. They probably won't call themselves the SEC. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be something else. And what I've theorized is that they'll have, like, old school kind of divisions where, like, for instance, I've, like I said, this is only something I've thought about. Like, the old Big East would kind of be a division. West Virginia, Miami, Virginia Tech, Pitt, Syracuse. What I grew up watching. Then you would have like Alabama, Auburn, probably Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, the old school SEC teams. SEC teams. And then I, for shits and giggles, I created like the old Big Eight and the old SWC. So like the te- all the Texas schools in Arkansas and the old Big Eight, Oklahoma and Nebraska and Colorado oh. League. So. Just shit like that for to have fun. Yeah, I just feel like all this, like, you know, NIL, the money, it's just – it's different from what I grew up with watching. It's sort of sad seeing what it could become 10 years from now. So, you know, we'll see. NIL, it's a problem right now because I, I think – and I'm not trying to play victim here, but I think a school like mine, West Virginia, is struggling right now because we have – some good players and who I've elected to transfer out all for money, basically. Oh yeah. It is what it is. And they, I think they have to put a stop to it. And, you know, and some people will want to criticize the NCAA or whoever for not having this in place. And my argument is, look, we can shit on the NCAA all we want, but this is uncharted waters here. Yeah. No one really knew what to expect. So let's cut the NCAA some slack here with the whole NIL thing. I understand why there weren't really any guidelines or restrictions, but now we're seeing some ramifications. Let's, let's 
figure this out and get to uh, some sort of regulation for it. And I feel like with the transfer portal and all that, all your main teams are benefiting from that. Like even Alabama, I think Alabama is one of the beneficiaries of the whole system. You know, it, it's it's it, it's definitely top heavy. If I had to say, like you know, with football, with football, you're all you're always going to see your main five six teams, you know, as your favorites to win it all. So, I mean, college football has a parity problem, and. Yeah. I don't know how you go about fixing it. I've thought about limiting scholarships, go from 85 to like 75 to start. Um, and I'll be honest with the whole NIL thing. I'm not a fan of restricting opportunities. I'm a capitalist. Yeah. Uh, but there's got to be something you can put in place to limit what we're seeing right now. Um, yeah. And the whole transfer portal thing has really taken off. But I, I, I think some people are naive when it comes to the transfer portal. Everyone, I've, I've seen some people say, like, it'll go, it'll die down. And it very well might. But I think for the most part, it's still going to be a, a problem. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, players are going to leave the small programs. They're going to go to the big programs, you know, money. And then not only money, just opportunity beyond the main stage, you know, have more exposure to TV, scouts. And you know. this is what's going to happen when you elected to waive the, you know, not sitting out a year to transfer, which at the time I thought was the right thing to do. Um, I always thought that was a dumb rule anyway. Now we're seeing some ramifications that may we may have to reconsider. Yeah, I say go back to the sit one year rule. And then that would that would limit the amount of people that just or as someone has pointed out again I don't I'm not, I don't want to restrict opportunities for NIL but if you're going to transfer you got to wait a year for NIL money yeah so basically it like discourages you from transferring try to limit it as much as possible yeah because I I'm a big fan of loyalty to a program like I don't like it when I see a player you know, go from one team to another and just sort of exactly. not fight for its, not fight for its spot. So um, if, yeah, if they could put some ramifications on, you know, players transferring here and there, then that'd be great. So. I don't know. I mean, there are smarter minds than me. I'm just giving some ideas. Use with them what you will. NCAA so or SEC, if you really want to take over. Uh, it's but, all going to come down to this it's all about money at the, very, at the end of the day it is and I, I don't know about un, if unfortunate is the right word but like it just really makes me like you said I'm like where did it what happened what happened to us college football wasn't always about that money wasn't always about that and now but that's what it's become that's mainly with anything. The NFL is the same way, you know, adding that extra week, you know, um, FIFA is that way. I just feel like every organization you think of is just going to want more money. Well, I think the whole money movement has started in the last, especially with players in the last decade. We've, yeah. And I think Charles Barkley makes some good points. You know, we've completely diminished the value of a college education. Yeah. Not saying you know you shouldn't go make your money, but uh, an education is also important. Yeah, and these kids nowadays don't see that. I don't think. No, they take it for granted. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of one and duns in college basketball. That was not the case back in the day. Um, so that's why you see a lot of one and duns. Players just want to jump ship, make their money, which is you know more power to them. Honestly, if I was a top caliber player Look, I would like i said i'm a capitalist go make your money yeah but i don't you know for, for the other players i mean the non-lottery picks why don't you stick around yeah but no it's all about money it's all about making money which you know i guess all right go go make your money but yeah i mean i can't blame them to go get money honestly yeah, if, I was exactly. in that position, if i was in that position i would jump ship and go out and make my money. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, you have a family, you got to feed, you know, so I can't blame them, but it does suck. It sort of, you know, ruins the college athletics. 
So we'll see. I mean, I really, in regards to one and done, I think the only college sport that really gets it right is baseball. And their rule is you have basically a decision. You can either go pro straight out of high school or you can go to college. And if you go to college, it's got to be for three years. Yeah. I think they're the only ones that do that right. Yeah. Now, granted, for football, I'm never going to encourage high school kids to go to the NFL. Your body is not ready for that. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Like, those are, those are go gross. go to college. You're not ready for that. But like those NBA, sure. Yeah. Or you know, Even, basketball or uh, basketball, sure. Baseball, sure. But yeah, football, like that. That I will never have a rule for football. Like no, no, yeah. no, no. You need three years. Yeah, you need three years. Like not even one and done. Like you need three years because yeah. that, like you said, those are grown men you're dealing with in the NFL. Like. Those are like big boys, like so. There's there's a there's only an exception with a very few amount of players. Like I think Will Anderson after his freshman year could have been a really that, good that is a, an exception to the rule. Yeah, but like besides, I mean, there's not a bunch of Will Smith, uh, Will Anderson. Yeah, there's one, and you know the last time there was arguably a Will Anderson, probably Jadavion Clowney. Yeah, or, and that was uh, almost a decade ago. Or uh, Chase Young. Chase Young probably doesn't. See, but I don't even think Young was on the same level as Clowney. Clowney was a dude after his sophomore year. Everyone knew who he was. Everybody knew he was going to be likely the first overall pick in the draft. No one real. I don't remember many people saying that about Chase Young. I say uh, Le- uh, Leonard Fournette was one too. Yeah, he was Leonard. one. Yeah, I'll give you that. So Le- not, it's not foolproof, but it's you know, one guy every five years or so. I think Leonard Fournette was definitely that for running back. Uh, I think uh, Julio Jones, freshman year, I think a lot of people were like, he's definitely NFL ready right now. Uh, but I, I think offense is a lot easier than defense. I feel like offense, like, if you have the speed, if you have a good body, I feel like if you have good, you know, good hands, I feel like you can go after one year and still be good. Probably. So. so. I don't know. It's a whole different world we're living in for college athletics, and I don't know. Like, I don't really have many solutions. Yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see 10 years from now, see where we're at. It's going to look even – I mean, 10 years ago, Nodder, we didn't have NIL. We didn't have the transfer portal. Conferences were starting to realign, but now even more so. Yeah. It, it – it wasn't as top heavy as it is now. Like with the SEC, SEC is definitely a top heavy. Yeah. So I think it's going to get worse 10 years from now, but we'll see. I mean, that's out of our hands. We'll just have to see what these guys. There's a way, there's do. a way to do it. I don't know what it is. Like I said, I've talked about limiting scholarships, you know, not limiting scholarships, but retracting them go from 85 to 75 for everybody. That way it limits spots. Uh, and then. You know, I've talked about the transfer portal and NIL stuff. There's a, there are people much smarter than me who can fix this if they really wanted to. Yeah. So we'll have to see. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to have to go. We've been talking for close to two hours now. I hope that this records. I've been doing this differently. We are on zoom for this podcast. We have not been on a zoom show before. We've usually been FaceTime or uh, what's the other one? Skype. I have recorded this. Um, I don't know how to pull it. So I've never done this before. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Well, if it, if it, if it does not pull, then we can do a FaceTime and do the. Well, yeah. Like worst case scenario, we'll just do this all over again. (laughs) We'll figure it out. I I can't, I can't stay up till one o'clock in the morning during the week, but we'll do it next weekend. Okay. Just let me know, man. All right, my man. I'll let you go. Thanks for coming on. Great talking always, man. Good talking to you too. All right, man. Take it easy. Peace. Later.